Welcome to the final edition of the KSO Sunday show of the regular season for 2019. Joined as always by Derek Young. Derek, we're not, they can't see us right now because it's like 1130 in the evening. The wind is gusting to 1 billion miles per hour outside and it's snowing. So we're not recording this inside of Bill Center Family Stadium. We're in my basement and I think it's probably the right choice. It's about 60, 70 degrees warmer in your basement. And we're going bowling in a couple of weeks. Exactly. It'll be nicer there. We'll do lots of fancy videos. If you really want to see me after the game, go watch John Kurtz's Power Hit Game Day video with me. You can watch some of us bowl over in the wind. It's pretty exciting. Took a number of takes. Anyway, segment one, we'll do it like we always do. We're going to walk you through every scoring drive of this game. We will still have a segment two for you, which will feature Chris Kleiman speaking and a number of K-State players. Usually we have a segment three with me and Derek again where we talk about big picture stuff. We might try to work that into segment one this Let's time. And if not, we'll just do a fancy long podcast maybe early in the week. Um, and talk more about sports. So let's just do what we normally do here. K-State beats Iowa State, of course, 27-17. I've buried the lead there a little bit on the KSO Sunday show. Brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. The Wildcats get the 10-point win. Double digits, as Derek Young will tell you, it's accurate to get eight wins on the season. Derek, first, before we go drive-by-drive, drive, man, just a great season for K-State and Chris Kleiman in the first uh, first season, his regular season for him here in Manhattan, and a big win for this program tonight. Yeah, it's a great season. Predicted to finish ninth in the Big 12. They'll finish tight for third since the Oklahoma State Cowboys could not knock off the Sooners on the on the Saturday night. And it's a season full of meaningful wins. I think you've touched on, on that with Power Cat game day. I've touched on it in four downs. But they beat Iowa State, which is a significant win because of how they are a recruiting rival and a recruiting peer right now. They got the rivalry win over KU and yep. did it in four-touchdown fashion. They got the big upset over Oklahoma. They got a marquee uh, win in the non-conference over an yep. SEC team on the road. An SEC a ranked team, team at the time. Yeah. yeah, ranked at the time. And one that's going to go bowling as well, even though they had a lackluster year as well. So just a eight-win season, probably three more than people expected it, and against – and with a lot of meaningful wins. No doubt about it. Let's go drive by drive and look at all the scores tonight from Manhattan. Derek, we had to wait not very long to see our first <laughs> points of the game. Joshua Youngblood goes 93 yards on the opening kickoff. So with 1447 still left in the first quarter, case they already lead 7 nothing. It is the third time in the last four weeks that Joshua Youngblood has returned to kick off for the touchdown. I'm surprised it took him 13 seconds to score. That's not, true. Not a good 100 yard time, no. Joshua, if you're listening. I doubt you are. But man, he's been quite the weapon Hope for K State. And he even started to become a weapon on the offensive side of the ball in the, in the last few weeks. Now, he probably still has miles to go hmm. when it comes to the passing offense because he that's probably where. He has the most learning curve because he never played much receiver, right. but certainly carrying the ball, he's starting to become more proficient. Absolutely. Later in the game, no scoring plays for him. He had a couple of jet sweeps that were key on the touchdown drive that really salted away at the end of the game, or at least put K-State up seven. He had a big run, so he was very, very, very crucial in this win. He was not the only true freshman, though, who made an impact tonight by any stretch. Jacardier Wright, who had not played since the Bowling Green game, I believe, got a number of carries tonight, specifically six for 60 yards and a touchdown, that being a 12-yard score with 13-28 left in the second quarter. That was the second touchdown of the game. And at that point, D.Y. early in the second, K-State leads 14-0 over the Cyclones. Yeah, we hinted at it all year that part of the reason were that he didn't play since Bowling Green was that he was dealing with some injury issues. And I think Chris Kleiman confirmed that to you in the postgame press conference, but he certainly played a whale of a ball game today. And they needed him because they found out early James Gilbert probably wasn't good enough, wasn't healthy enough right. uh, to provide much. So... They made the smart coaching decision and decided that they were going to bring the true freshman off the bench. He hadn't played in two months. Um, probably a limited playbook with him in the game. Iowa State right. never picked up on that, but it didn't hurt K-State. Right. Uh, six carries for 60 yards for Jacartier Wright. 19 carries for 91 yards for Jordan Brown. We'll mention him later. Skylar Thompson ran for 38 yards. Josh Youngblood had 26. I think they said at one point K-State ran 13 straight running plays in this game today. Skylar Thompson only 16. threw 16 straight running plays. Thank you. Skylar Thompson only threw it 12 times today. I'm going to give you a couple Iowa State scores back-to-back -to, -back to kind of talk about that as we continue on here in segment one. Sean Shaw with a 15-yard touchdown catch from Brock Purdy made it 14-7 with 5.59 left in the second quarter. And then with 42 seconds left in the first half, Brees Hall from Wichita scores from one yard out. It is 14-14 going into the locker room, D.Y. Yeah, those are two negative plays for K-State, but I'm actually going to kind of take a positive of angle on it. I think one of the decisive factors in K-State winning the ball game, and I haven't even recognized this until now, is that they 
realized that they couldn't throw the ball to win, and Iowa State could did not realize that. No doubt about it. I mean, Brock Purdy puts it in the air tonight 30 times, I believe. He got 15 to 30, 185 yards, a touchdown. Skyler Thompson just 5 of 12 for 57 yards and a pick. It's not pretty stats-wise. He actually played okay in this game. Right, four drops. Right, and then Brock Purdy's line, he's a 67% thrower. Does go 50% on 30 attempts for this few yardage. Shows, one, how well K-State's defense played, and two, how they understood what the conditions were in this game and how to try to win in these conditions. Yeah, and to be fair, outside of a 20-yard rush by Brees Hall, uh, in Matt Kimball's defense, they didn't run the ball very well. No, they really, really struggled outside of that run. I would totally agree tonight for Iowa State. The Cyclones do take a lead midway through the third quarter on a 36-yard field goal to go up 17-14. But, Derek, that's it for Iowa State. I will ask you, though, at that point, when K-State's trailing midway through the third after a couple t- turnovers by Skylar Thompson, how are you feeling about this game? Uh, I still – I know folks probably thought they were dead in the water at that point. I didn't think so because I just thought the elements would always keep this a close game uh, for any team could uh, win it as long as they made the plays. And we saw down the stretch, K-State was the one making the plays. No doubt about that. And one of those was a Blake Lynch 43-yard field goal. I don't know wow. if it's into the wind, against the wind, whatever, because it was mulling side to side at 200 miles an hour. An impressive kick. I mean, I I thought going into it, both there's there's no way this – both of them, no doubt about it, but there's no way this is going in. He knocks that in. That was a huge pressure pack kick. You're down three, almost the fourth quarter. He knocks it in, 17-17. You mentioned he had two kicks. So I'm going to get to the second kick here in a second because you're right. K-State then took the lead, though, with 10-24 left in the fourth quarter on a 15-yard Jordan Brown touchdown run. Like I said, 19 carries for 91 yards and a score for Jordan Brown. Chris Kleiman said it in post game. First time he's been healthy since Oklahoma. He looked like a different player tonight for K-State. Yeah, that's the first time he's been healthy since Oklahoma. It certainly showed. I think we we said you know a bunch of times in the press box, it looked like a new, a different Jordan Brown, a new Jordan Brown. And if they had that type of Jordan Brown all year, you do have to wonder, despite some of the struggles by the offensive line, uh, what kind of offense this could have been had he been you know at least close to 100 percent in some of those gains? Because I know we kind of beat up the offensive line in some of those poor yeah. rushing performances, but I know we we can, we're not you know we know this everyone knows this, but I think the running backs left yards on the field this year. Some of that I think had to do with them being banged up and no lacking a little bit of explosiveness. But I think. We saw tonight the hints of Jordan Brown that we saw tonight shows that maybe it wasn't all the offensive line all year. Yeah, he looked like a difference maker. Like you said, if he if he got to play healthy behind that offensive line, he probably would have looked like a different player throughout the season. I thought he was a big, big, big key tonight. The last points of the game, another Blake Lynch field goal. I want to give you the chance to talk about special teams here in a second. Blake Lynch from 27 yards out with just 3.04 left puts K-State up 10, really ices this thing. The Wildcats do, of course, go on to win. Go 8-4. and four. Special teams, though, real quick, D.Y. Blake Lynch, of course, makes both those kicks. Devin Angsel tonight averages 46.8 yards a punt, including one that went 24, I think. So he destroyed the ball outside of that. Of course, the young blood kickoff return. A lot of people played well tonight for K-State to win, but special teams, which has been good really all year since the four-muff punts early in the season against, I think, Bowling Green and Mississippi State has been very good, and they were a huge reason why K-State won tonight, Derek. Yeah, we saw a sign inside uh, Bill Snyder Family Stadium tonight that said Special Teams University. Uh, That couldn't be more true than it was tonight. And actually, outside the non-conference all year, Bill Snyder's no longer the head coach, but special teams still won this team probably two or three games this year, and I don't think that's hyperbole at all. They certainly did tonight. And just hats off to the kickers and punters for both teams because for them to do what they did tonight, even Iowa State as well, is just no amazing doubt. to me. Yeah, I did want to mention that. I thought Iowa State did a nice job on special. I mean, as far as not giving up the kicker turn wasn't helpful for them. But otherwise, I thought all things considered, they were kind of impressive too in that aspect of the game. A couple of stats about the defense, Derek, I want to hear you talk about just your thoughts in this group. Iowa State tonight only gets total offense 236 yards lowest of the season. You said they couldn't run the ball. You were right. 24 carries for 51 yards. And you mentioned there was a 20-yard Brees Hall run in that 51 yards. Right. Iowa State, 1 of 13 on third downs tonight. That started 0 of 10, I believe. They didn't get their first third down conversion until five minutes left in the game in the fourth quarter. Uh, K-State's defense tonight, I I don't want to be hyperbolic because there was a lot of wind out there. It was a unique condition. That probably hurt Iowa State some. Either way, though, K-State's defense was very, very good against Iowa State. Yeah, for a while, Iowa State's starting field position was their own 41. I think it finished at their own 38 was the average, but it was just impressive when you're operating on a short field that many times. Going one for 13 on third down certainly helped. And also, two turnovers by K-State on their own side of the field. So Iowa State had 40 yards or less to work with both off of both those turnovers. Only came away with three points. If you want to talk about a little sneaky thing that probably won the game for K-State, three points off two turnovers right there. With, mm-hmm. 
less than half the field is probably the difference in the game. No doubt about it. Skylar Thompson, who, you know, the first turnover in those two straight ones, he got hit from the blind side on a pass rush. It was a bad throw on the other one that was a pick, but Skylar Thompson really appreciated his defense for coming out and making those plays for him. Yeah, that, and that interception you talk about, um, I don't know if that was a bad throw, probably a bad decision. Maybe there's a bad just, read, uh, yeah. There's just no way he knew what the coverage was, really. Yeah, absolutely. And he was, you know, not happy with that, but he was very happy with the win, as he should be. K-State 8-4, and four, a chance to win 9 in a bowl game. We don't know where that is yet. We're going to pass it off to Chris Kleiman and K-State's players in segment two. Derek and I will come back early next week, have a big, long pod about recruiting. They're going to go on the road. They told us, they told all the media that, of course, after the game today. They're going to be doing that next week. We can talk bull possibilities, big picture. We'll have a lot of time to do that, and we're really, really excited to do so. But that's going to wrap us up for segment one of the KSO Sunday Show, brought to you, as always, by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Come back for segment two. Here are all of Chris Kleiman's post-game press conference quotes from select Wildcats, whatever Grant Flanders finds for you. And since we're not going to have the chance in segment at 3DY, we should tell them now that they should tell their, their friends. I'll say it. Tell their friends. Skyler, what did, what did that win mean for you guys to get that today? Uh, it was huge. I knew coming into the game um, that we were going to face some elements today um, and that the more you know mentally tough team was going to win the game. Um, and it was huge for us to run the ball the way we did today, uh, given the, the, the conditions. Uh, you know, it made it tough to, to throw the ball. Um, but sometimes that's just part of it. You know, I just did my best try to try to manage the game. You know, I had those two turnovers, but, you know, just sometimes this is the way it goes. Um, I just try to have a short-term memory and not let that, um, you know, define my next play um, and just do do whatever I can to put ourselves and this team in a position to win. And our old line played a phenomenal game today. I thought they played really physical, and, you know, they we, we were led by those guys. And... You know, there's no way, you know, better way to, to go out than, than than like that with those seniors up front. So I um, was just really proud of them. You know, Jordan Brown, you know, he him healthy is, is huge. You know, he's a, he, he can make plays and he's a versatile back, um, you know, and he did really well in Jacardier. Got a got an opportunity tonight um, and I was really excited for him uh, that he capitalized on it, you know, and kind of showed us what he's capable of doing uh, just for the future, you know. Um, he's a great kid and, you know, he's kind of battled some injuries this, this season, but, you know, he's healthy and, and whatnot, but we just got to continue to help him, you know, understand our playbook fully, um, you know, to where he can be on there, you know, be in there in passing situations and understanding, you know, the pass protections and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, that, you know, that's, that's a process. You know, YB, Youngblood is, is phenomenal, doing a great job. Um, just making plays for us. Um, I just really, truly love, you know, Josh's approach. Um, and, you know, I'm just going to keep on, you know, keep on him, you know, as, as many people will about just staying grounded and um, continuing to just, uh, you know, improve. You know, there's the sky's the limits for, for him, truly. And he is just scratching at the surface to what he can be and what I know he can be. Um, and I'm just going to do my best to push him and lead him the best way I possibly can. Um, but... You know, when you're out on, on the field with people like that, like Josh and, you know, Jordan, James, you know, this whole offensive line, Dalton Schoen, you know, literally everybody. Um, that's what makes this game so special. That's what makes my love for the game so great. And, um, you know, it was, it was a great team win today. You know, Blake Lynch kicked the ball well. Defense played well. I thought other than giving up a couple big plays. Um, but our special teams did great. And it was just all around. You know, everybody contributed. And that's what makes this special. And, uh, it's a great way to finish the season, and uh, we put ourselves in position to be in a really good bowl game, and to really go go finish the season out the way that you know we we want to. Yeah, it was definitely a crazy ride. Uh, you know, there's a lot of doubt. You know, Coach Kleiman and the new coaching staff. You know, at the beginning of the year, and uh, you know a lot of people overlooked us, but uh, you know we knew as long as we would buy into Coach Kleiman and his program, and uh, you know just keep believing every single day and week by week. Uh, you know the results would come, and uh, you know eight and four isn't the best record, but you know uh, we're pretty happy with it, especially being Kleiman's first season. And uh, you know the guys really you know, came together, tight niche, and uh, you know we've been playing well. It's a great feeling. I know last year, last year those guys didn't make a bowl game, so just to come in and uh, have a high, high standard. You know, next year we're going to try to create a higher standard, set the bar even higher. So just to come in at eight wins, that's that's a great uh, stepping stone. But we still got one more game to try to get nine, win number nine. So. Um, it's just a great foundation, I would say. Uh, never been carried off like that before, but I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just want to do my best and give the seniors a good uh, leaving the bills. So. <laughs>
Have you had a much more difficult kick in your career than a 43-yarder with that much pressure with the wind going on, I mean, that you made tonight? Uh, I don't think so. It was uh, pretty windy all day, pretty nerve-wracking. Just, it was changing every two minutes, right. just trying to figure it out. and just You kind of, like, I look at Devin punting and stuff and just seeing what the ball does and look at Nick doing kickoffs and just try to judge where it's going. And so. in, a, in a windy day like this, to kick it like you did, have a kickoff return, Devin averaged 47 a punt, you know, how good were special teams today? Yeah, it was I, – I mean, it was a great day for special teams. So, I mean, Devin, he's a great punter. I don't know. The team should definitely pick him up, I yeah. think. So, yeah, <laughs> just, and he does awesome for me at holding. Man. I can't thank him enough as long, as, along with the uh, rest of the guys that yeah. go out for me. So. It's a uh, great momentum. And, uh, you know, like I said, it was the seniors' last time playing this, uh, you know, in the Neil Saunders Family Stadium. But, uh, you know, one more game left. And, uh, that's definitely motivating for, you know, us younger classmen because, uh, you know, we're going to do as much as we can, all we can, just to, you know, set it off with right now for those guys. Obviously, great, great win, great team win uh, by our guys. So happy for our seniors um, that uh, have put in the blood, sweat, and tears for for a, lo a long time, a lot of years here. And uh, after the big win down at Texas Tech, we were in the locker room and we challenged all the underclassmen, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, um, to lay it on the line uh, today for our seniors because of what they've meant to our program. And, and without question, uh, we played a, an excellent football game. Was it perfect? No, but the conditions weren't perfect either. And uh, I told the guys, you can't control the conditions. You just got to fight through it and play through the conditions. And it was obviously very, very windy out there. It affected a lot of plays. It affected a lot of balls. Uh, but uh, uh, to get out to the fast start that we did uh, and Josh to have the big return again, and it was a great start. Obviously, uh, Iowa State's an exceptional football team with a, with a great offense. They end up tying it up and um, coming in at halftime, I just said, guys, we just got to be able to make some more plays. We just weren't making enough plays. And if we make plays, we're going to be fine. Um, and then coming out in the third quarter, we turned the ball over twice in a row uh, and, and we we're really fortunate to only give up three. And so we're down 17-14. Uh, but I, I could sense still a lot of life on our sideline. We just needed to make a play. And and then uh, Skyler makes a big throw to Sebastian and kind of get us into the field position. And then, uh, um, you know, hats off to our offensive line. We were able to run the, rush the football, I think, for about 230 yards um, against an exceptional defense and be able to punch a few of those in there. And so um, great team win. I told the guys uh, in the locker room, don't ever – underestimate the power of belief and the power of love. Those guys believe in each other. They love each other. And when you have those two things going, you got a great chance to be successful. Defense was dynamite. I, I think I saw on this thing they were one of 13 on third down. And uh, I, I liked Coach Hayes' plan coming into it. Uh, I thought our coverage was really good. Uh, we, we were sloppy in the first half tackling, but it never really hurt us that bad. And then uh, uh, I thought the defensive line really got after them all day. Well, I haven't. I, that's a good question, but I, I, you know, coming fresh off of a of a locker room celebration, I, I, I'm there's nothing I'm not proud of. I mean, there's, you know, our, our backs were against the wall uh, before the season started. Not very many people thought uh, an awful lot of this football team, uh, except for the guys in the room. And then we were three and two, and I told them to block the outside noise out um, because everybody was saying, no, it's not, we're not a very good football team. And all of a sudden, we win three more games in a row. And I said, block out the outside noise. They're going to tell you how great you are now. And we're six and two, lose two more games. And I said, block out the noise. Just, it's, just, it's just us in our room. Let's just focus on the guys that, that, that you're with on a, uh, and your brothers on a daily basis. And, um, you know, I, I had belief in these guys. They had belief in each other. Uh, they just had to believe in themselves. And um, uh, so, so excited for the senior class that embraced me and embraced our staff. I'm not sure the Cardi Wright had played since the Bowling Green game, maybe. Just how much did he. Uh... Yeah, he, uh, well, he was banged up for about six weeks after that game. He had a high ankle sprain, so he couldn't have played or he was kind of in and out, and he kept re-aggravating that. So we really kind of put him on the shelf for almost two months. Um, but then when he got healthy, two things. One, I want to find out what, what Jacardier is, uh, and he has gotten better. We were going to play him in either the Texas Tech game or in this game. And for whatever reason – 
it maybe just didn't fit in the Texas Tech game. So we said, we're going to get him into the game early, get him a couple of carries, uh, and then see how he does. Uh, and obviously uh, had a big run, had a couple of run-through tackles where he was a powerful kid. And, and that's what we thought when we recruited him. And so I'm, I'm excited because I think, well, I know he has the at least one more game left, and that's what we have. So he'll play in the bowl game too. In the fourth quarter, It was really important. And we were able to run the option again. You know, they, they were stacking a lot of guys inside, and we noticed that we could get the edge a little bit again, some a la what Jacardier did, as well as uh, what Skyler did on some speed option, uh, and, and to be able to move the chains. We were able to be effective on third down. We, we were 7 of uh, 14. We were able to be effective so that allowed us to stay on the field, probably got him a little bit wore down when you think of we were out there 34 minutes uh, in time of possession. And and I just think from the fact that we're running inside, we're running outside, we're using the jet game, we're using the quarterback run, all those things. When when Mess has all those things at his disposal and we're all and we're gaining yards on all of them, then we're pretty tough to beat. Pretty special talent. You know, and I knew that when we recruited him, that uh, he was a difference maker. And uh, uh, guy's really grown up too. And um, the stage is not too big for Josh. And he proves that week in and week out. And I'm excited because he's just a true freshman that hasn't had the ability to go through a developmental lift or, or get bigger and stronger like I know he's going to in the offseason. Uh, but uh, I think it also shows uh, the young people that uh, they, when you come into a program, if you uh, put the work in, put the time in, and learn the playbook and stuff, you can help us. The, the talk will obviously be in special teams about Josh's kick return, but how, how close was the field goal by the yeah, because we couldn't tell. I mean, the wind I thought was more blowing at our sideline uh, as much as it was helping or hurting. hurting. And, and we thought if we could get to the 25, um, he could make it. And uh, uh, it was as good a kick as I'd seen him hit. And he hit it flush, probably started out four to six feet right of the right upright, and then came back in with the wind. That was a critical play to be able to get that uh, three points there. And then, you know, obviously the icing one to get us uh, up 10. I thought Blake has had a phenomenal year and, and bounced back after a miss that he was disappointed in the week before. In, in your opening statement, you touched on the back-to-back the -back possessions where you guys held them after Skyler's uh, uh, the fumble. Man. Yep. How, how big was it? You held them only three points. After three points. Well, it, it was huge, and our defense was playing with a lot of confidence. I mean, we were going out there, and there, right, there was a number of short fields, but they were playing really with a ton of confidence, knowing that uh, with the wind, it was just tough. It was tough sledding to throw the football out there. I mean, there were some balls that, that, that were making some curves and moves in, in the air, and we just felt we were getting pressure uh, on the quarterback. And uh, granted, they, they dropped some balls. Balls, but I think we dropped some balls too, and, and that's going to happen when the wind's that, uh, that blowing as hard as it was. And I just think our defense was playing with a lot of confidence. And as we talked early and midseason, uh, it's a tough league to play defense in. Uh, but each week I could see, see steady improvement with, with our defensive guys. Uh, potentially, you know, it, it all depends. When you have two senior guys like James and, and, and Jordan, uh, and then with what Harry's done, we were we always wanted to find out about him, but I don't think we wanted to to waste his whole year. And you know, on top of that, uh, that was a healthy Jordan Brown which we hadn't seen since Oklahoma. And um, and James was really nicked up today. Um, Malik didn't play. Joaquin didn't play. So Jordan had to show up, and, and he did big time. When you limit Purdy to, to 185 and get one-third of that on the slant, how was it to, uh, to keep him in check? He's a great player, and I told Matt before the game that uh, uh, what I thought of uh, of Brock and and what a competitor he is and what a great player he is, and he said the same thing about Skyler. And uh, we both know we have exceptional quarterbacks, and and they're both winners. They're both great competitors, and have nothing but the highest praise for Brock Purdy. Devin Hankel averaged uh, forty six point eight yards uh, per punt, uh, four punts. How impressive was it?
was that considering how the wind was sort of yeah, especially since he averaged 46 yards and, and really missed one early in the game. So if you you know you take that one, he probably averaged in mid 50s. But uh, our kicking game had to be critical today for our success. And I thought Nick McClellan did a great job with kickoffs. Uh, obviously Devin um, punting the ball, and then Blake with the field goals, the kick return. But even the simple things, the snaps and holds, that, that's not easy to do. And and give De- Devin Ankle credit, and uh, give Randon and West credit because they were on point with their snaps. He, he did. I don't even know what that was, uh, but he was banged up. But Jordan was healthy. Jacardier was doing some things. Uh, Harry came in. And, and I, I got to give Harry Trotter a shout out because he blocked unbelievably well and, and cut guys down all day long. And there's a team guy. There's a guy that's playing for the name on the front of the jersey. Uh, so, so pleased with, with Harry Trotter. He's a, a great team player. Um, it changed possession by possession because it, we just kept looking around saying, which way is it going? Uh, we knew it was going to be windy. We were all, that probably enabled us to play a little bit more man coverage on defense because it just wasn't a whole lot of deep over the top throws. Uh, but, um, you know, it was obviously uh, something that was in the back of our minds all the time. You know, punting the ball late, I mean, we were worried about, you know, the one that hit D Pat. What do you tell uh, D Pat? I mean, the ball's kicked 18 yards or something. And Phillip does a great job of getting on that. That was a big, big play by Phillip Brooks. And, um, you know, that, it was just so difficult in the kicking game today. Without a doubt, because, you know, we're using uh, the, the kick return and punt return that have been so successful um, here at Kansas State, but we're using the punt and kickoff of things that, that I've done in the past. And so trying to mesh those things, uh, credit to all the guys that are involved in special teams, uh, all the coaches and, and analysts that we have involved in special teams. And then you still just got to credit the, the players because our players go out and execute. And every time we have a chance to return a kickoff, you see Brock Monty, you see Ross Elder, you see the guys that are saying, hey, we're going to make a big play. And they have a lot of confidence on that team. I'm not trying to look past this one, but how excited are you to have a chance to work with these guys now for another you know, three weeks? Um, really, really excited. We we obviously hit the road recruiting as coaches. They'll work with Coach Dawson throughout the week, and then on the weekends we'll get back together until we find out uh, what the plan is as far as who we're playing and where we're going. Uh, but for for us, you know, you have 27 seniors that that need some rest that don't need to practice a ton. But we have all these freshmen, sophomores uh, that uh, we need to give uh, a, a great look to and, and focus on those guys and, and get these extra practices and time to develop those guys. Uh, Walt was not close, um, and uh, I would assume he'd be ready when we play, whenever it is in December. Uh, Malik, we thought maybe could go. We thought Joaquin maybe could go. I think part of that was the weather, too. You know, it's hard to get warmed up and, and loose. And so um, I've got a lot of confidence in Sebastian. And uh, obviously with Philip making plays and, and Landry and, and Dalton and, and Josh, and then with the win the way it was, we knew it was going to be a game where we'd have to rush the football. It, it seems like only a couple of weeks ago you we were in a fist of watching the final game. It's gone by pretty doggone fast, hasn't it, Scott? It really has. Um, and now K-State picked third, or picked ninth, and K-State has an opportunity to finish third in the league. And you're the first coach in case of history to finish great wins in the first season. Yeah. You're the stats guy. I don't know any of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what has this ride been like for you? Um... Uh, it's been an unbelievable ride, and and uh, an unbelievable ride for all of us. And you're never not going to hear me say me. Unbelievable ride for all of us as a staff. And once again, my hat goes off to our seniors because they're the ones that had to embrace us. They're the ones that had the disruption for years, five years into their time, uh, that they get a new staff and a new coach. Um, we gave them everything we had. We, we poured our heart and soul into those kids, and they responded. And every one of those seniors, when they ran down there, shook their hand, gave them a hug, told them how much I loved them. They told me how much they loved me and appreciated what, what we have done together. Uh, and so that that was just a cool experience. And, and uh, I'll, I'll reflect it in time, but 
probably is going to be some time too. We got a last question here. <clears throat> so besides Ryan Day at Ohio State, out of all the first year head coaches in the Power Five, you seem like to have the most success. What does that, how does that speak volumes for the foundation and the culture that you established? <laughs> Yeah, we're trying. I mean, it, I, there's been some tough times now, guys, and you guys know that. You know, we, we, we've been a little bit of a roller coaster, but I always told you guys we'd continue to get better, and the kid, get the guys would continue to buy in and learn more and take more ownership and get more invested in the program, and they've done that. So uh, let's credit where credit is due, and that's with the players uh, and, and the assistant coaches. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. I think Kleinman's proved the doubt is wrong. I definitely, yeah, I definitely think he has. And, uh, you know, obviously being a first year coach going from FCS to FBS, there's a big transition. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of naysayers, but, you know, Coach Kleinman's a winner and he knows how to win no matter what. Level. I'm sure the injuries weren't fun to deal with, but looking back at his grad transfer senior year, how's it been for you overall? Um, it's, I feel like it's been a great decision to come here um, to be able to be around these guys and uh, be around this family atmosphere has been great. Eight and four regular season. How do you kind of judge that? Um, you know, this, I feel like we had a great season. Um, of course, it's always, you know, going to be those games that we felt like we should have won. But overall, I feel like we had a good season. Oh, man, it's, it's wonderful. This is, what, this is what we've been wanting from the, from the beginning, you know what I'm saying, to, to go to a good bowl game and, and to, to keep this thing going. You know what I mean? We're on, we're on a good run, you know what I mean? So, like, this next month, we're just going to get our bodies right, get our, get our bodies right, and figure out who we play. And once we uh, figure out who we play, we're going to go back in attack mode. Oh, man. Oh, man.